Welcome back to Country Homestead. In this video, we'll be starting our sawmill shed in part one, putting up the big boy beams, the 32 footers. Here, me and my daughter was debarking the post in the beams. We was getting ready to burn all of the beams in the post. That way, after we burnt them, we could get some. Uh, do our diesel and motor oil treatment. wife was busy painting the door that goes on the underpinning of our house we just built that so she was giving it a good oil base paint Here we started laying out the measurements on where we was going to put our post in the ground for our sawmill shed. Boy, that attachment on the back of that tractor, that, that auger, that is uh, worth its weight in gold there. Sure does help out a lot. Here we was putting tire on the bottom of the post that actually makes ground contact. We'd go up 40 inches because that's how we was digging our hose. We'd tire all four corners. Now we did not tire the end of the log. We burnt the end of the log and we treated it with diesel and uh, 
motor oil, but we did not put tire on it. And here we're just covering it with a bag to try to keep the tire on it. And again, we left the ends open. So, you know, water would drain. M post are six by six southern yellow pine and uh sixteen six long. They're pretty heavy. Good thing we got all them young men there with them strong backs to get them things in the hole because they are they're pretty heavy. We just used, uh, I had some uh, one inch by two inch slabs cut that we used for angle brass brackets. And uh, we cut some two by two stakes, whittled them down, and that's how we got our pose straight and level.
these was the front two posts for the front of my shed. We got the back two in already, so now we're starting on the front two. Here's where we found out both of the front hose was off. So, you know, as nice as that auger is on the back of that tractor, sometimes you just gotta use the old post hole diggers and fix your mistakes.
seen a video where a guy used one of them IBC totes that he took the plastic tank out of it and made it into like a man lift basket. And we, so we did it and we used the yellow strap and strapped it to the forks and it does real good. Two men can get in it easy and do the work that you got to do. So here we're getting our measurements. We want eight foot off the ground and uh, then here in a minute we'll set our water level up and we'll measure from the top of the pole to the top of the water level, the, the bubble, and that's how we'll get our other measurements off of that water level. where I decided all the measurement was good and we're going to cut the post and uh, like I said we'll cut it eight foot off the ground our beam will set on top of that post and our beam is 12 inches thick so we'll have a full eight foot opening from the ground to the bottom of the beam Here it was time to break out the old trusty handsaw. We got her all cut in two. Started a new day here. Grandbaby, she was ready to help. She's a big help out there. She brought me my level. Here we're just preparing to get our cross beams up. They're we cut them 6 by 12 by 16 6 and of course we got a 15 foot opening there so we cut them down but we put some blocks on the side of that post so the beam was set on it we got a 2 by 4 kind of spacing it up there so the posts don't stretch out Them lifting straps we bought on that last go around, they uh, they work out real good. You can get a good level pickup on it.
you know, you can get it spread out in the middle, get your weight balanced real good. Here we're using a 3 16th plate steel. I cut them. It was a six foot, uh, six inches wide by 14 and a half inches because it's just some old scrap that I had laying around that I cut up. We drilled a half inch hole through the beams and then we ended up boring it out to a 5 8 because we was using a half inch boat so that was eight inches long. And we put a plate on both sides of the beam and you know sandwiched them together so I'm pretty sure they're not going nowhere it's pretty stout Here, where I'm working at the back of that shed, that's really going to be the middle of the shed. I got it two foot higher in the middle there than the front, and when I build the back half, the back 15 by 30, it will be a two foot drop to the back. I will do another beam just like that one going back and then do two smaller beams across the back they're not going to be another 32 foot beam it'll be two 16 sixes so i can cut it down to the size i need here we start adding our hardware the metal plates and the boats to saddle that top 32 foot beam that we're gonna put on there we're just finishing up the front. And here comes the big boy.
here we was going ahead and boating up that big beam we was boating it up solid and as you can tell there's me and my brother-in-law Mike both in that basket there's plenty of room for two people to work in it it's a uh, it's a good basket and cheap here we was getting ready to pick up that second beam we was truing up the end real fast and had to get my little operator to get up there with me that's my granddaughter Genesis she wanted to check out the loader earlier in the day I had my two great nieces with me and they both got to get on the loader with me but the videos is wasn't on my phone I don't have it right now I was wanting to put them in here but both of them really enjoyed it I let them you know basically set up there and pull the knobs whenever you know I needed them to pull it they would operate it so they really they like it yeah I went ahead and got her down off of there before we actually doing any heavy lifting to put it up on top of the uh, the frame there but you can see you can get them pretty balanced with them straps they uh, they balance real good and we set it on there and that's not the side I wanted down so I had my son go in the middle here and you can spin them straps and uh, re-grab it and it will uh, it'll, it'll flip the, the beam for you <laughs> 